In this video, we're going to discuss how to cement Vita Enamic. Uh, Vita Enamic is a hybrid material. It's a unique material in that it's a combination of a ceramic infiltrated with some polymer. And because of this unique characteristic, uh, it has the flexibility of a resin, but the strength of a ceramic. But I want to make it very clear, this is not a composite. It's a much stiffer material, uh, but it has some unique characteristics in that Vita, the manufacturer, recommends that you can mill this material as thin as one millimeter. All other materials require at least a millimeter and a half in the central groove. Uh, in this material, you can be comfortable thinning it uh, as thin as one millimeter. It also mills fast, uh, faster than other materials. You can mill a crown in significantly less time with the Vita Dynamic than other materials, and you'll have significantly reduced burr wear. Whereas you might get 10 to 20 mils on a regular set of burrs, you'll get up to 50 or 60, possibly more. So we're going to go through this process of uh, milling the Vita. We've already milled it, as you can see. We're going to talk about polishing and removing the sprue using the Meisinger kit. We're going to talk about how to cement the material. And in this video, we'll use Multilink, although any resin cement will really work. Uh, with Multilink, you have a self-etching bonding agent, and then you also have um, the ability to use the silane, the monobond primer, to uh, cement the restoration. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the sprue using this uh, disc. And then I'm going to go to this uh, stone wheel. And that stone wheel is going to remove and adjust the sprue. 9736 in the burr kit. Um, it's used at low speed, uh, you know, moderate pressure or so. And it's just going to remove and smooth out where the sprue was. And if there's any contour changes that you can make, you can also use this uh, uh, burr to, to make those changes. The next step is to smooth and pre-polish. If there's any burr marks, um, we're just going to use this 9613 burr in the kit and just lightly go over our margins, over our contour, and just going to go ahead and just pre-polish and smooth out the restoration so that we can prepare it for uh, the final polish. Now, lots of different uh, techniques available to polish this restoration. Um, in this, we're going to be using the Meisinger kit. Uh, so prior to polishing, you can use this 863 burr to put in some anatomy. The, the milling unit has fairly large uh, burrs in there. And uh, we can go ahead and, you know, prior to polishing, just define our anatomy a bit using this burr. Now, Vita also makes a, a polishing kit that's uh, meant for chair side use. This is the clinical kit. The Patterson number is listed below. They also have a technical kit that is um, also uh, listed here that's meant to be used in a slow speed in the laboratory setting. Now, you can stain and glaze uh, enamic. Vita makes a stain and glaze kit. These are light cured uh, stains that are applied to the restorations. So we're going to hydrofluoric acid etch the restoration first, then we're going to apply our surface treatment, and then from there we'll go ahead and uh, apply any of our stains in light cure. Now, most users are going to polish the Vita material, the enamic material, simply because it's more predictable, it's a little bit easier. So we'll start with this coarse twist polisher first. Now, it's important to note that anytime we're polishing Vita enamic, uh, we want to use low speed and light pressure. You don't want to use heavy pressure in this uh, situation. You want to make sure that you're just doing, running it consistently. These twist polishers work well to get into the occlusal anatomy. And this is the coarse uh, uh, burr that we're using here, the coarse polisher, running it along the entire surface. Once the coarse polisher is complete, we'll use the medium. These are the 9771 medium polishers. Again, low speed, uh, light pressure. You don't need to really lean on this. You want to be, uh, you know, right around 12,000 RPM at the most. That's what uh, is recommended by Meisinger for these. And for Enamic, you could probably go just a little bit less than that either. But you, it's, just because it goes faster doesn't mean it polishes any better. So the final step is to use the high shine. Uh, once the high shine is complete, you'll get a very nice surface on the restoration. Yeah, this uh, video shows how easy it is to polish this material. And if you need you know, a, a higher shine than what you can achieve with these polishers, by all means use a polishing paste um, if you want to get a higher luster on the final restoration. But as you can see from this uh, short little demonstration, we've managed to get a very nice polish on our enamic block.
So we're going to cement this to this typodon just so we can show the steps in detail. So the enamic has been polished. It's now fitted to our preparation. Now we need to prepare the inside surface. Now because this is a mostly ceramic, we're going to prepare the inside surface with 5% uh, Vita acid. Uh, this is hydrofluoric acid and we're going to apply it. We're going to let the acid sit for 60 seconds and after 60 seconds uh, we're going to go ahead and rinse the internal. Okay, That's going to prepare our surface for bonding. The hydrofluoric acid uh, chemically prepares that surface or mechanically prepares and it and it's the silane. In this case we're using monobond. Uh, the silane is going to chemically prepare the surface for bonding. So after hydrofluoric etch we apply the monobond and then from there we're going to go ahead and apply to the inside of our restoration. With any silane you want to let it sit for about 60 seconds and then after that air dry the silane so that we remove and now we've prepared the surface of that restoration for bonding. Now to prepare the tooth structure we're going to use in this case Multilink. Multilink is a self-etching bonding agent uh, and resin cement. Uh, so we're going to take one drop of the A and then one drop of the B. We're going to mix them together and there's uh, nothing else that needs to be done to the tooth other than clean the surface and we will go ahead and we'll mix the A and B together and then apply it to our tooth structure. Now with Multilink and with any bonding agent, it's very critical that we don't just apply it and let it sit. You want to aggressively scrub this in for at least 30 seconds. If you don't aggressively scrub this into the tooth structure for 30 seconds, you increase your chance of sensitivity because we're not, we're not bonding well to the surface that's present on the tooth structure. So once we aggressively thin, uh, apply for 30 seconds, we're going to air thin the adhesive. Uh, you want to make sure that there's no pooling of the, uh, the bonding agent anywhere. And then let's load our crown. You don't need to overfill it. Uh, line the internal. Instead of filling the internal, line the internal so that we ensure that we get adequate coverage on the restoration with no voids or porosities. So the important thing is, get that uh, cement close to the margins so that when you seed it you have excess cement coming out that way we know we're not getting any voids anywhere so I've seeded the restoration we're gonna take either a micro brush or we can take a rubber tip and then we'll go ahead and we will uh, remove any excess that might be there uh, different techniques are available with multi-link you can actually tack cure this it gets into a gel stage um, if you choose to tack cure great uh, I'm just going to let it uh, self-cure for a bit as I floss. So we're going to floss that distal contact holding that restoration down and then we're going to go ahead and floss the mesial contact. Once you hold that restoration down, try not to let go. As you can see in the handoff here, it's a little cumbersome filming this video, but try not to let go of any pressure because what you don't want is uh, the restoration to unseat on you. Okay, So we've cleared off the excess. Now we're going to do our light cure. And with that light cure, that restoration is ready to be uh, complete. So the process is no different. Uh, we can go ahead now verify that our contacts are open. We check our contacts. And the process is no different than cementing any other material. Enamic is an interesting material, but uh, let's take a look at a clinical case here where there was a defective uh, quadrant of restorations that needed to be replaced. And enamic is a great choice for partial coverage or full coverage. It works well. Again, it's not a flexible material like a composite crown. So it, uh, the preparations were done. Uh, this case is courtesy of Vita. We've milled out enamic. One of the things that you'll notice is that the edge milling is extremely detailed on this material. So you get very nice margins. You go through the bonding protocol as we discussed. And then the last step is to polish and finish the restorations. You can use wheels and discs or whatever your favorite technique is and then here's the finished case of the enamic restorations that, that are going to serve the patient very well and they blend in nicely with the surrounding tooth structure. Thank you.